Appreciate you all being here at the Voice of Conlet Football tracking Penn State football today. We got Marty Leap here from Penn State Rivals. Please uh, check out uh, Marty's work as we will have his information there on the banner soon. Marty, good to see you. Good to see you, Mark. Always enjoy being on. All right. Uh, this one was brought to my attention sometime on Wednesday concerning Penn State head football coach James Franklin. This hasn't really blown up to be like this huge national story at this point, but I'm sure depending on how it turns, it has the possibility. So facing allegations from a former team doctor that he meddled in the medical decisions of the program's doctors and trainers, one of those involved um, someone who had suicidal type tendencies and others just involved maybe some key impact type players that could or could not be determined to be ready uh, for the next day's game during meetings that were typically held on Fridays from what I understand. Yeah, I mean, this is something that's kind of been going on for a few years now. Um, I don't know if people remember, oh, I think it was two summers ago, I want to say two or three, Isaiah Humphreys, a former safety who came out and accused Micah Parsons basically of hazing and bullying people in the locker room. And that was very quickly dismissed as nonsense, pretty much. Um, a lot of this kind of stems back to that because uh, some of the former team doctors and medical staff, which is what you're seeing here, who have kind of been out for a buck ever since they were let go by Franklin and the university, um, who they've appeared in court before. Um, James Franklin's name has since been dropped as a defendant because nothing was ever found that he'd ever done wrong. Um and a lot of it seems to kind of still be stemming from that where, you know, they went after the football program. They went after James Franklin. Nothing came of it. And now it seems that they're trying to go after the university's like health system. So, I mean, I don't expect anything really to come of this. And especially it's twofold. One, Penn State fans get extremely frustrated sometimes with how conservative and cautious they have been with injured players. Um, I mean, obviously every program in the country, you have that kind of push and pull between player and coach and medical staff and, you know, coach and player are going to want the kid to play. Even if the medical staff is saying no, sometimes like this happens everywhere, but Penn state has been very, very, very cautious with these things. And two, even, even Penn state fans who may not like James Franklin, the game day coach would be the first person to tell you that the, the family first mantra motto that he builds his program on is not just the show that truly is who he is. Um, which I think just makes it even harder to believe that he would ever do anything that was potentially putting his players at risk. Um, so, yeah, and I know one thing that I expect to come up um, in this, whatever happens with court hearings and testifying or whatever is, you know, they mentioned the, the pushing for the player to be taken off scholarship that that doesn't happen. Um, if you have medical issues and you're unable to play, you still retain your scholarship anyway. So that's, that's just not how Penn state does things. So I expect this to kind of blow over and, be nothing. It's one of those things. Hey, it's, it's late May. People are just looking for content at this point. And like you said, this hasn't really kind of caught on nationally anywhere. Anyhow. Is there a next step in this process? Um, I'm not a hundred percent certain when the next step is from my understanding, from everything I've read and been able to gather. Um, there will be some sort of, I don't know, it's going to be court hearing, testifying, whatever it is between this doctor and the, Penn State uh, health team, basically. Um, I don't expect anything, again, I don't expect anything really to come of that other than for the whoever's there on the university side to present their information. Um, and again, for probably to go nowhere, but I'm not sure when that may be. But again, I don't really expect anything major to come of this. All right, time to talk uh, Penn State football here at the Voice for College Football. Appreciate you all stopping by. Yeah. We got Marty Leap here from Penn State Rivals. Uh, I really love the conversation when it comes to position battles. So we're sitting here late May. Of course, not much is going to be decided between now, at least they will know of, and the first week of August when they hit the field after Big Ten media days. So what are those position battles that you are most eyeing as we hit August? I mean, I, I know we've talked about it ad nauseum all offseason, but we might as well stick with it and start with wide receiver because it is the biggest question mark on this team. It's probably the single position group that held this team back the most last year. Um, right now, I mean, obviously, Keon J. Lambert-Smith entering the transfer portal changed some things there. I would assume that Trey Wallace is going to be your main guy at receiver. Um, Julian Fleming, the transfer from Ohio State, obviously he's going to play a lot. 
But behind those guys, it's wide open. Um, Amari Evans has shown some flashes, has shown some good things. So is Liam Clifford. So is Caden Saunders. Um, but I think the question becomes of those guys, who's going to step up and be consistent? You know, who who's going to seize this opportunity? Incoming freshman Tyser Denmark. I know we'll get more to the freshman here in a little bit, but incoming freshman Tyser Denmark, who was originally committed to Oregon from Philadelphia before flipping to Penn State, um, I think is another player who – It'll be tough for him to make an impact because at the in this receiver battle because he's not getting to campus until June, but he's got the tools. So I, I think the wide receiver battle is going to be very fascinating to watch. Um, offensive tackle is another one. You lose you lose Caden Wallace and Olu Fashana, who are both offensive or uh, yeah offensive excuse me both were NFL draft picks. Um, everybody knows Fashanu and Wallace was much better than anybody realizes, and Penn State fans want to give him credit for. Now, one thing that's going to help Penn State there is you have Drew Shelton. If that name sounds familiar, the 2022 season, uh, he was a starter for the last like six or seven games of the year as a true freshman, including in the Rose Bowl. Um, so he has a lot of starting experience. He missed the spring due to injury, though, but I expect him to be a left tackle. But right tackle, you have Nolan Rucci, the former five-star who transferred in from Wisconsin. You have Anthony Donka, who this staff is insanely high on and started in the Sugar Bowl last year, or the Peach Bowl, excuse me, the Peach Bowl last year, had a great showing in that game against Ole Miss. So that offensive tackle battle will be one to watch as well. And cornerback, too, because, you know, a cornerback, the last few years, few schools have produced talent at cornerback the way Penn State has. Um, and this year, you don't have the experience that there's plenty of talent. A.J. Harris, another transfer from Georgia, who some places has a five-star recruit, has come in and seemingly grabbed the bull by the horns. You have Cam Miller, who's played a lot for them in recent years. Um, Jalen Kimber, another transfer with a lot of SEC experience. Zion Trace, he's a young guy the staff is very high on. Um, Adavion Collins, who last year was primarily a special teams guy for transferring from Mississippi State, made huge strides this offseason. So I think the three biggest battles to watch are going to be wide receiver, offensive tackle, and cornerback. Um, and again, receiver is a little bit of a different boat. I think offensive tackle and corner, you feel good you're going to be okay because while you might not have a ton of experience, I think you're very confident in the talent that's there. And then wide receiver, you know, it's a matter of is, is somebody going to step up finally like we've been waiting for since Parker Washington and Mitchell Tinsley left after the 2022 season. Um, I do think though, you know, the, the Keandre Lambert Smith, he's extremely talented, obviously, but he wasn't always the best you know, just influence. We'll say to have in that room work ethic wise and attitude wise. And that's kind of your veteran guy. That's not good. So I do think replacing him with Julian Fleming is kind of that veteran leader in the wide receiver room. That alone may go a long way with how that battle shakes out. The Amazon link is in the description section, folks, of all the videos. If you use the Amazon link, it's uh, transparent to you. It doesn't cost you a penny. Same shopping experience. It links right to your account. There are no issues there. Believe me. Try it out. The Amazon link's in the description section. 